I wonder what I'm supposed to remember. Bill, do you know what I'm supposed to remember? Oh, you're no help at all. Oh, Bill, Bill, come on, wake up, darling. Do you know what I'm supposed to remember? Didn't the office call me? Well, somebody did. But it couldn't have been very important because I've forgotten who it was. And if it had been important, I would have remembered, wouldn't I? Huh? Yeah, maybe that makes sense, but I'm too tired to figure it out. Ah, sleepy head. Oh, Bill, how could you ever afford them? Oh. I couldn't afford them. They're evidence. Maybe you forgot that I'm still working on that jewelry case. Come on, take them off. Oh, Bill, then they're not for me. No, they're not for you. Dear. Oh, never mind, baby. One of these days I'll buy you a diamond that'll knock you sillier than you are now. Oh, Bill, I know you will. <sighs> Now, how would the best private detective in New York like his eggs? Poached? Boiled? Scrambled? Or fried? Uh, you know, all you can do is to fry them. Well, I just like to pretend to myself. Now, hurry up, honey. I'll have breakfast ready in a jiffy. Don't worry. I'll be there when I hear you scraping the toast. You may not be the best cook in New York, but you're the prettiest. You may not be the prettiest private detective in New York, but you're the best. Here your eggs, Bill. I may soon be the best unemployed detective in New York. How do you act nonchalant in the bread line? Don't be silly, Bill. How can you be unemployed when you're your own boss? Listen, if I don't crack those diamond thefts soon, the jeweler's indemnity is going to hand the case over to another agency. Old man Stone's about fed up with me. Well, what if you do lose the case? There are plenty of other clients. Stone isn't the only pebble on the beach. He's the only pebble on my beach. Since the Fraser case, he's the only client I could get. If we lose him, we're out in the street. Oh. To me, Bill, this jewelry case is very simple. All you have to do is catch the thief. What a coincidence. You know, I had that same thought only a little while ago. Oh. Janitor. Our garbage hasn't been picked up yet, and it's nine o'clock already. Good morning, Mr. Stone. Reardon here yet? I'm sorry, not yet, Mr. Stone. Why isn't he? It's nine o'clock. When I say nine o'clock, I mean nine o'clock. Can't he even keep an appointment on time? I called his home last night. He was out in the case, but I gave his wife your message and told her it was very important. What's his number? I'd like to wake him up, personally. It's Rhinelander 06345. Hello, uh, Mr. Redden's apartment? I'm sorry, but the land's busy. I don't care, busy or not. I've got to talk to him. This is important. Put me through, do you hear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I guess it's all right. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hey. Where's your janitor? Oh, yes, the janitor. Do you know what time it is? Certainly I do. It's nine o'clock. Yes, and what are you supposed to do at nine o'clock? What am I supposed to do at 9 o'clock? Stop repeating everything I say. He's mocking me. Well, don't let him get away with it, honey. We're not that far behind with the rent. I have a good mind to approach you to the health department. I'm tired of your garbage. Garbage? That you're... What are you talking about? You, you, you're crazy. Bill, I think he's insulting me. Just a minute, my husband will have something to say to you. Well, what'll I say to him? Well, tell him, tell him that he can't talk to your wife like that. Hey, listen, Dumbbell, can't you come up and get our garbage without an argument? Do we have to have a discussion every time we... What? Why, who is this? What's the matter? Are you scared of him? Yes, Mr. Stone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'll meet you in the cells. Stone! That's the reason for the ribbon. You have a very important game room. This is all at your office at 9 o'clock. Yes, sir. At Nacelle's store. Your secretary said it was very important. I'll be there in about five minutes. I made up my mind. I'm going to kill her. But, Bill, you haven't eaten your breakfast. 
I'm going to kill you. It's illegal. Don't quibble. But you promised to love, honor, and cherish. Till death do us part. That's now. Oh, oh. oh Bill, it's later. Mr. Stone will be furious. Holy mackerel, I've got to get out of here. Uh. This doesn't mean I've given up the idea of strangling you. Yes, darling, when you have a little more time. Oh, Bill. I suppose the least I can do for a condemned woman. Bye. Oh, he loves me. Oh, oh, oh Bill! Bill! You forgot your evidence! I don't understand it. Fifteen thefts, and each time just a single piece of jewelry taken. You'd think that would be some sort of a clue for Reardon to work on. I don't see why we're discussing this further. If you're dissatisfied with him, fire him. Bring in another agency. I wouldn't fire me if I were you. Good morning. Good morning. Tell me one reason why we shouldn't fire you. I found the thief. That's no excuse. What did you say? I found the thief. Well, who is he? His name's Crenshaw. He's a clerk here in your store. Crenshaw? Charles Crenshaw? Mm -hmm. Oh, but you're not serious. I've known his family for years. I'm not accusing his family. Crenshaw. I never thought of that possibility. Did you, Mrs. Nazelle? No, of course I didn't. Still, he's one of the three employees who has access to our vaults. That doesn't necessarily mean no, that he... No, no, of course it doesn't, but he's been living way over his head. Spending a couple of hundred a week on a fifty dollar a week job. Well, that's no proof. No, but this is. Last night, while I was searching his apartment, I picked up a pair of diamond clips with which I've uh, carefully put away for safekeeping. Well, why haven't you arrested him? Where is he? Is he around? Not yet. He thought it'd be a little late. Maybe he's skipped. Now, look, Stone, let me handle this in my own way. I want to get the whole gang, find out who's disposing of this stuff, who the fence is. Will you give me just a little bit longer? All right, but you'll have to work fast. I've got to report some results pretty quick. Yeah. And don't worry, folks. The Reardon Agency will solve this case if it's the last thing we do. It's liable to be, too. Mr. Reardon, huh? would you be interested in this new choker for your wife? It's really a lovely novelty. Yeah, the choker part interests me. There's something I want to tell you, but I couldn't in front of Davis. Will you meet me at the 35 Club for lunch? Yeah, 12.30. What do you get for this dog collar? A 3,500. No, thank you. I can choke her for less than that. Crenshaw. I'm sorry, I can't wait a minute longer. I'm late now. Did you want to see Mr. Reardon about something important? Well, yes, but it was personal. Well, one would hardly want to see a detective if it wasn't about something personal. Now, if you'll just step into my private office. Oh, but, uh, won't you be seated over there? Now, remember. Whatever you say, we'll never go out of this office. All your secrets are safe with the Reardon agents. Just you tell us your problem. Well, are you a member of the firm? I mean, are you a detective? Uh, you remember the Fraser case? Yes. Well, my deduction solved that case. She got 20 years. Now, what can I do for you? Well, I guess it's all right then, miss. Or is it Mrs.? Just call me operator number seven. All our operatives have symbols, and our clients, too. Now, if we should decide to take your case, you will be referred to as, um, let me see. Six, five, five, G. One, six, five, five, G? Mm -hmm. Yes, that is, of course, if we should decide to take your case. Now, you tell me all about it. We are alone. My name's Crenshaw, Charles Crenshaw. I'm a clerk in a jewelry store on Fifth Avenue. I feel sure I've been followed for the last several weeks. Oh, very suspicious. Who followed you? Well, I don't know. Followed by party or parties unknown. What else? Last night, my apartment was searched. Oh, very suspicious. Who did it? I don't know. I wasn't there, naturally. Sounds like a very difficult case. I can't imagine why anyone would be interested in me. 
That's what I want you people to find out. Just who is interested in me. It's getting on my nerves. Don't worry, 1655G. The Reardon Agency will take your case. Just put your mind at ease. And now about a retainer? Mm. Don't worry. Put your trust in us. And remember, the sun never sets on a Reardon agent. Thank you. You're welcome. Business seems to be picking up around here. Reardon agency? Hello, Miss Barnes. Any messages for me? No, there are no messages, Mr. Reardon, but I'll talk to Mr. Reardon. Hey, why don't you hang around and pay attention to business? Suppose a client came in. Oh, I haven't got that vivid an imagination. Say, what are you doing in my office anyway? Well, what's the sense in finding clues if you don't take them with you? I brought that pair of clips to the office. Now, confess. What would you do if I weren't around, huh? Honey, what I'd do if you weren't around, I'd be ashamed to confess. Now, listen, you run on home. Don't annoy my clients. If I had any clients. Take me to lunch and I'll let you in on a little secret. No, I can't do it. I can't. I'm at the 35 Club right now with a client. I'm Mrs. Nacelle. She owns that jewelry store. Well, I don't care what she owns. What does she look like? Don't worry. She's old enough to be my mother. So long, Trouble. See you tonight. Old enough to be your mother, huh? Mother married at 15. You see, Davis owed my husband's Wall Street firm some obligations. And when I decided I wanted to go into business, my husband took over the Davis store, changed the name of the firm to Nacelle, and kept him on as manager. Mm -hmm. We gave him a size of a share of the business, of course, but he's always well resented the fact that we took his business away from him. I should think he'd be grateful to you for making him a partner. He isn't. Naturally, I, I can't come right out and accuse him, but I feel sure he had something to do with the thefts. Steals one piece at a time and sells it. It's his whole attitude. He feels that everything in the store is rightfully his. And then when you mentioned Crenshaw, he seemed a little too willing to be convinced, didn't he? Yeah. Madam would like a table? Yes, a writing table with pen and ink. Certainly, this way. Thank you. Yeah, but those clips I picked up in the Crenshaw apartment, they're going to take a lot of explaining. Mr. Reardon, it's possible he took them home to make an outside sale. Could we check and see if he signed a memo for them at the store? Yes, we could. Here you are, Chief. I think you better look that over right away. You don't mind my intruding with business, do you? No, of course not. It's as though someone were lying, doesn't it, Chief? Um, Mrs. Nacelle, do you know my wife? How do you do? How do you do? Oh, a sidecar, my favorite cocktail. It's a martini. Oh, and I hate martinis. Well, I'll just pretend it's a sidecar. Uh, Sally, darling, thank you for bringing the note. Mrs. Nacelle and I are talking business. I'm sure you won't be interested. Oh, but I am. Mm -hmm. I worked side by side with him on the Fraser case. She got 30 years. You know, uh, it's quite possible that Davis and Crenshaw might be working together on these things. Did you say Crenshaw? Yes. Have you a store on Fifth Avenue? Yes, I have. And does this Crenshaw work for you? He's one of my clerks. Crenshaw isn't involved with any robberies. Don't be ridiculous. Sometimes he says the silliest things. Say, how do you know anything about Crenshaw? Men are such little boys. That's what I always say. Isn't that what you always I said, how did you know anything about Crenshaw? Well, uh, I don't. I don't know anything about him. But I thought a nice young man like that couldn't be a thief. How do you know he's a nice young man? Well, I... I don't. Uh, but I thought with a name like Crenshaw... Show me a Crenshaw and I'll show you a nice young fellow. Pastry, madam? No, thank you. Oh, there's what Bill likes. He's just crazy about chocolate eclairs. No, thanks. No, isn't that silly? He's always worried about putting on too much weight. Why, most men at his age have much bigger stomachs. You see, it's hardly noticeable. Except in a bathing suit. Will you take that thing away? Oh, no, darling. Eat half of it anyway. Maybe Mrs. Nassau will keep you company and eat the other half. I don't want any. I guess he doesn't want it. Take it away, please. I'm very sorry, madam, but I'll... I'll have to charge you for it. Oh, I don't see why. It's as good as new. 
I, I hardly think. I mean, I, I beg your pardon, but I, I could take it. Never <laughs> mind. Never mind. Please, we'll keep it. I'm getting attached to it now. Yes, and besides, I dislike scenes in restaurants. So do I. Oh, are we going? Will you excuse me while I see my wife to the door? But, uh, well, I was real. Well, I hope we have us together again sometime. <laughs> see you soon, I hope. Bill, I tell you, I think you're making a great mistake. I made my mistake years ago. I know, but it's about Crenshaw. Listen, Sally, if you don't go home, I'm going home. And if I go home, Mrs. Nacelle's going to be insulted. And if Mrs. Nacelle's insulted, do you get the idea? Oh, Bill, and St. Ruth, won't you forgive me? I'll be a very good girl from now on. No, I will not forgive you. All right, I'll forgive you then. For being mean and not forgiving me. Crenshaw. Hello? Hello, 1655G. This is Operator 7. Don't talk now, just listen. Things look bad, but keep calm. Don't talk. I want you to meet me at... Part of Beauty Parlor. But I can't leave the store until 5.30. It might look suspicious. Hey, Flanagan, he's talking to a dean. Sounds like they're working together. That must be the fence. You boys stay here and get over the door. I'll get rid right away. Just tell them you're 1655G. Everything will be arranged. Bye. I'm supposed to meet a lady here. What's your name? Well, it's, it's not a name exactly. I'm 1655G. Oh, yes. Follow me. That gentleman is here. Will you leave us alone a minute, please? Who went with it? Right this way, please. Thank you. It's all right, 1655G. I'm operator 7. Answer me yes or no. Guilty or not guilty? Guilty of what? Of stealing jewelry from the store. I don't know anything about those robberies. Would I have come to you if I had? No. It doesn't make sense that you'd hire a detective to find out if you've been stealing things. Now don't get excited, young lady. We're looking for someone. You stay here, Slattery. Flanagan, you take that side. I'll take this one. I'm sorry, lady, but I'm looking for a thief. Do I look like a thief? Well, no, but uh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I understand, lady. I'm sorry. What they need is Frank Buck. I don't know why I should hide. I haven't done anything. All right, all right. 
mind if you say so. Crenshaw, that's the end of the hide and seek. Come on, you too, Mrs. Frankenstein. Oh, what does this mean? It means you're under arrest. You'll have plenty of chance to talk later. Come on, <laughs> take him away, Battery. <laughs> Tell it to the chief lady. He handles all the canary complaints. <laughs> hey, 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 I'm married. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, lady. I don't understand bird talk. <laughs> yeah, that's very interesting. Is that what you're going to wear south this winter? Come on, I'm in a hurry. Oh, no. Holy smoke. It would be just my luck to marry a cuckoo. Hey. Ask him to explain those diamond clips I found in his place. How about it? What's your explanation? I can't explain them. I don't know anything about them. Oh, Bill, I... Quiet, can... quiet. I suppose you'll say why I suppose you'll say they were planted on you, that some old meanie sneaked in and hid them in your bureau drawer. It's possible. No, of course it's possible. And it's also possible you'll think up a better excuse after spending a couple of nights behind the bars. Lock him up. Who'll make the charge, Redden? I will. Grand larceny. Thanks, Captain. Don't worry, 1655G. And remember, it's always dark, it's just before the dawn. No, I'm telling you, Crenshaw is not guilty. Now, I'm not saying that because I took a $200 retainer. My mother begged me not to marry beneath my station. Sooner or later, you'll have to release him, and then you'll be worse off than ever with Stone. Even now, my poor old father will only speak to me at family reunions. Don't you see, Bill? You might lose the case. Think what that'll do to your reputation. You might not get another client. Every day I say to myself, it's enough. I'm going to send her home to her mother. And I think, what's the use? Her mother's home with her mother. All right, smart Alec. I'll prove to you that Crenshaw is innocent. Then what did you say? I must have been born with a curse on my head. Yes, and that's about all. Look, it's coming out in bunch Ouch! Well, in strands, then. I know what you need, a good singe that'll get rid of all the dead hairs. Yeah, and me with it. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, now, don't be a baby. There's nothing to it. It'll only take a jiffy. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is the only head I've got. Do you think I want to go dancing around with a bald-headed man? Who's bald-headed? Well, you're going to be. Now, just a second. I'll be all right. Now I know what they sent your uncle up for. Arson. Hold still now. Mm. Mom, darling? Yeah. Uh, oh, dear. I have to get a longer one. Well, what are you looking for now? Kerosene? Oh, don't be silly, darling. Ah! 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 Can I get you anything else? insurance company insists on retaining those musical comedy detectives. The husband represents us and his wife, the man we're trying to convict. Well, you can make your complaints to them personally because I invited them here for dinner tonight. Table producer? Oh, no, we're with the Michelle party. We're going to meet them at the bar. Thank you. Now remember, you promised not one word about Crenshaw. Can't I even look as though I thought he was innocent? Just keep quiet. I don't want you to open your mouth once tonight. Well, if I don't say anything, they'll think I'm awfully stupid. What do you want to do? Convince them? Hello. 
How do you do? Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening, Mrs. Reardon. May I present Mr. Davis? How do you do? And my husband, Mr. Nassau. How do you do? Shall we have our cocktails at the table? I'm not saying to dinner. I wish you'd think over what I've been telling you. My table, please. Hello, Bill. Hello, boy. How do you do? How do you do? You know my wife, Mr. and Mrs. Nassau, Mr. Croy. How do you do? I'd like a chance to talk with you. We'll arrange it sometime. 570 Madison Avenue, Suite 1013. Thank you very much, Mrs. Redden. I'll make it a point to drop around. Do that. Who's he? He's Tony Croy, one of the biggest crooks in New York. Oh, really? Bill, that isn't the first time Croy and Mrs. Nassau ever met. How do you know? Woman's intuition. <laughs> I don't know. I just came on duty. Well, Mr. Croy, may I have it? Was there a note left for Mr. Croy? Yes, sir. Okay, but... let me have it. But I just gave it to a man who said he was Mr. Croy. What? What right did you to do that? I'm what? Tony Croy. Well, I'm terribly sorry, sir, but how okay, was I to know Okay, okay. What kind of a looking man was he? There he goes, down in that elevator. Cab, please. Don't lose that cab. Driver. Let me offer 50th and 5th. Here's to our charming wives. Oh, dear. What's the matter? I was just thinking, here we are in this beautiful place drinking champagne, and Mr. Crenshaw all by himself in that dirty old prison cell. Don't let that worry you, my dear. He couldn't afford a place like this anyway. But it does seem cruel as being there, especially when we're not at all sure that he's guilty. I'm quite sure. But how can you be sure? We have only the flimsiest of evidence. But, Mrs. Nassell, you and your husband must realize that since Crenshaw was arrested, there hasn't been a single theft. Doesn't that prove something? Just another bit of circumstantial evidence. Certainly I wouldn't call it proof. And there isn't a jury in the world that would call it that either. No, I admit no jury would convict him on that alone. But it would be a factor against him. And vice versa. If the robberies had continued after Crenshaw was arrested, that would react in his favor. Then I'd certainly have to admit I had the wrong man. Oh. oh. Sorry, Mr. Mary. This Crenshaw talk is upsetting her. No, it, it isn't Crenshaw. It's just that I don't think I'm feeling very well. I'm sure I'm not feeling very well. You want to lie down, honey? There's nothing to worry about, Bill. It's just, you know, my condition. What? Condition? Oh, it's perfectly all right. I wonder, would you mind taking me to the ladies' lounge? Of course not. Gee, can no, I? You just sit there and don't worry, Bill. Too much trouble to ask the attendant to bring me some aromatic spirits of ammonia. I'll get it, my dear. Maid. Maid. Will you get me some spirits of ammonia, please? Yes, ma'am. Right away. Thank you. She'll be here in just a minute. Well, I... I don't think I'll wait. I really think I ought to get home to bed. Well, shall I tell your husband? Oh, no. Well, I don't want to spoil his fun. Will you please tell him I've taken a cab? He He's to stay here and not worry. Oh, but don't you think that under the circumstances he'd want to take you home himself? Oh, no. Please don't. I'm quite all right. Goodbye. Will you get me a cab, please? Fifth Avenue and 50th Street.
foot from the left, second row. Do you feel 
feel all right? I feel fine. But Bill, breakfast is... Are you sure you're all right? Oh, boy, am I all right. Oh, but honey, you should have let me take you home last night at a time like this. At a time like what? I know. I know you wanted to keep your precious little secret just a little bit longer, didn't you? Didn't you? Hmm? Well, it's just that I don't want to be a bother to you at any time. Hmm. Oh, I'm a very happy man this morning. Look at that sun. Well, it's the same sun that came around yesterday morning. Ah, uh, yes, but it's shining on a different man. Uh, anything exciting in the paper? No, no, just the same old stuff. Now, you go on and relax. Say, for the love of Pete, Nacelle's been robbed again. You see, I told you all along that Crenshaw was innocent. What did they take this time? They cleaned out the whole place. What? What did you say? I said they took everything in the joint. But, but, but all was before. They only took one thing. Yeah, but this time they must have backed up a truck. So I've got to get downtown. Oh. Oh. Bill! Bill! He's dead! They've killed him! Somebody's murdered Mr. Davis! I read the paper, little mother. But you didn't tell me he was dead. Oh, now listen, baby. You mustn't excite yourself. Oh, gee, I hate to leave you now. But you understand, I've got to get downtown. I've got a murder right here in my lap. Goodbye, honey. Mm -hmm. And if you need anything, you let me know. Yes. Oh, and promise me one thing, darling. What? Whatever you do, don't lift anything. If he'd only told me that last night. Looks like a good fingerprint, Chief. That's fine. Get it. How are you coming? These footprints are starting to collapse. Well, that's fine. Keep after it now. Did you find anything? Not yet, Chief. You were right back where we started from. Only now, there have been 15 more thefts in the murder. You certainly can get results, Reardon. I congratulate you. Yeah, but look here, Stone. You're presuming that this is an ordinary run-of-the-mill job. No, no. We're up against a very complicated case. That's where you're wrong, Reardon. A baby could solve this crime. Oh. All right, Johnson, why don't you pin up your diapers and let's see what you can do. Mr. Stone, I'm Johnson, special investigator from the DA's office. How are you? Well, have you found out anything about this? Well, I found out enough to know that nothing unusual has happened. A robbery takes place, Davis happens to be in the way, and he gets bumped off. Simple. Gee, you got a great analytical mind, Johnson. Don't lose it. Only how did Davis happen to get in the way, and who bumped him off? Oh, now, 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 you've been working on this case for months. I just started this morning. Let me get a good lunch under my belt. Maybe I'll wrap up the whole case for you by night. Why don't you just grab a sandwich and wrap it up by noon? Oh, because I'm playing ball with you, that's why. Do you want to make you look bad in front of your boss? Gee, that's why to you, Johnson. You better get started, though, hadn't you? Remember, you gave yourself a time limit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I gotta talk to my men. Glad to have you if it'd be like coming back to the DA's office. We could always use an apprentice. <laughs> the class whip. Now, I wouldn't drop that suggestion about going back to the DA's office too quickly if I were you. You want to roll the phone, Ridden? Okay. Hello? Hello? Hello, Bill, is that you? Have you caught the murderer yet? Oh, now listen, honey. Billsy, Willsey wouldn't let you worry about anything like that. <laughs> but I always say you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Now listen, baby. You must have only quiet, peaceful thoughts. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, honey, you just lie back and... Oh, but darling, you've got to catch the murderer right away. The suspense is killing me. You've got to catch him. Listen, Sally, murderers don't grow on trees. Don't they, Billsy Woozy? Yeah, but I gotta go now. Mr. Reardon. Yeah. I got something for you. Take it easy, Flanagan. Look, I found this down in the back of the alley. Didn't that come over the woman's shoe? Yeah. Yeah? Listen, keep this quiet. Take it out and have a plaster reproduction made of it, and then cover every shoe repair shop in the city, got it? I got you. 
Hey, Chief. Yeah. Ain't this like Cinderella and me, the fairy prince? Hey, hey, my hat. Here's the report from the police laboratory. The bullet was a 38. Well, well, Johnson finally found out something. He must have gone home with a headache. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Boss, I found her. I mean, I found the shoe store. It's up here on West 69th Street. A dame come in with a shoe to have a new heel put on it, and she's coming back to the shoe at 5 o'clock. It fits perfectly. 5 o'clock? We haven't much time. Come on. You're sure you'll recognize her? Oh, sure. I've got a pretty good idea what she's looking like. Okay, I'll tell you what you do. When she comes in the door, you whistle. That'll tip us off. Can you whistle? Oh, sure. <laughs> Listen, if you're going to whistle that, stay on key. <laughs> got it? Oh, sure, I got it. Okay, you take your shoes off. What for? When the dame comes in, she'll think we're customers. I'll be waiting for a shine. Oh, I get it. Well, as long as it's on the expense account, you might as well put a pair of rubber heels on. Hmm. Well, what are you two doing here? Sally, what's the big idea of following me around? No, no, you're off key again. Mr. Reardon. I told him you'd be glad to take care of it. Thank you. Won't you sit over here, Mr. Stevens? No, thank you. I haven't the time. I came to give Blue Reardon a tip. When he was special investigator in the DA's office, he did me a good turn. I'm here to pay him back. Oh, that's very nice of you, Mr. Stevens. I'm his wife as well as his partner. If you tell him about it, he'll tell me about it. Sooner or later. Don't you see? Don't you? Well, I suppose it's all right. Oh, yes, of course. Well, I used to work for Davis. He was suspicious of Mrs. Nacelle. Mrs. Nacelle? I thought so. I was hired the trailer. She used to meet a guy, a very tough guy, whose name was Tony Croy. Tony Croy? Are you sure it was Tony Croy? Well, I ought to know Tony Croy. They used to meet at his apartment at 73rd Street, in San Salvador.
What are you doing in my apartment? Well, you, you see, that that is, I, well, I heard a, a, a noise, oh, somebody coming, and I didn't know it, it would be you. Naturally not, this being my apartment. Well, and you see, I didn't think the management would like the, the, the women in the men's rooms, and I, and I, well, besides, I wanted to ask you some questions. Well, before you start asking any questions, I'd better get you a glass of brandy. Oh, I, I don't want any brandy. I, I'd just like to take my clothes off. Well, go right ahead. I never argue with a lady. Oh, I mean, have you anything I could put on while my clothes dry? You'll find a closet full of clothes right in the dressing room. Thank you, Mr. Crowley. I don't guarantee the fit. on May 21st, 1927, when she gave you a jeweled cigarette case engraved to Tony from Francine. Well, now, don't you think it's possible that I knew an entirely different Francine back in 1927? Yes, I suppose it's possible that you went in for collecting Francine. Well, I'm sorry I had to subject you to this grilling. That's quite all right. Oh, and Mr. Croy, I'll send your clothes back in the morning. All right, no hurry. Take your... Take your time. You haven't lost your ability to pick locks, I see. No, I keep in practice. Don't you know it's bad manners not to answer your telephone? And they told me downstairs that you were out. What did you expect to find here? Well, to get to the point, a hundred thousand dollars worth of diamonds. I... I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. I expected to get them at the store the other night. But Davis got your note instead of me. And he also got himself shot instead of me. I'm afraid I, I still don't know what you're talking about. I tagged Davis from the Skyline Club to the store. And when I got there, he was on the floor. Dead. You had it all set to bump me off, didn't you? But your charming little plan didn't work. However, I'm perfectly willing to let bygones be bygones as long as I get that hundred grand worth of stuff you took from the store yourself that same night. If you think I implicated in that job, you're mad. Absolutely mad. No, not mad. Just thirsty. And I'd love a little brandy. Won't you invite me? Help yourself. Thanks very much. Sit down. You know, you don't make very many mistakes, baby, but you certainly made one when you forgot to divorce me before you married this Wall Street sucker. Now then, are you going to give me the stuff, or do I have to be nasty and carry tail? Haven't you done enough to me? You've already made a nice little nest egg for yourself on the stuff you forced me to steal from the store. You figured that the farce with Miss Sell was about over and that you could have quite a honeymoon with $100,000 and Mr. Crenshaw. Crenshaw? Oh, that's ridiculous. Well, that's all right with me, baby. You take the romance and I'll take the diamonds. And you don't really have to worry about me. I caught that daffy Mrs. Reardon in my apartment this afternoon. She's wise to us, knows we've been meeting, and found a cigarette case you gave me years ago. Of course, it'll take the dame some time to put two and two together, but when she does... How'd she find out? You told her to... I did nothing of the sort. Those dumb dames always stumble on things. I'd advise you to be a little bit concerned about her. Once she lets her husband know, you're in trouble. And now to get back to our unfinished business. What's your husband's office number? All right, Tony. I've got the diamonds. I'll give you half of them. Oh, no. I don't mind you taking a trip with Crenshaw, but I'm not going to finance it. Now, come on, where are they? Oh, stop sniffling. Where's the stuff? In the safe behind the second panel. You mean this one? Yes.
Here's the DA's man now. Dead? No, we're just playing games. Who killed him? Well, that's for you to find out. Who found him? I did, officer. This is my apartment. I came home, walked in here to find him lying just like that. And I suppose you expect us to believe that, too. I don't care whether you believe it or not. It's the truth, I tell you. Look, we're not a lot of dummies. Just relax, Mr. Nassil. Nobody's accusing you of anything. Robert! I tried to keep her downstairs like you told me, but she wouldn't listen. Oh, darling, are you all right? They frightened me so downstairs when I came in. Now, please, dear, easy. Easy. Oh, darling, why did you do it? That terrible temper of yours. Temper? No, no, I didn't mean it. We know just what you meant, lady. I didn't say anything. I'll deny everything. We didn't know Croy. We never met him before the other night. Just take it easy, lady. I'm afraid we'll have to take you downtown for questions. No, no, you can't take him away. Take it easy, lady. Take it easy. He didn't, I said. You know what I'm about. Take it easy. <laughs> Give us your version of this thing. I'll try and keep the boys awake. All right, now look. We know that Davis came from here to this cabinet. According to these footprints, he was standing 12 inches in front of this cabinet when he was shot. All right, now what? <laughs> <laughs> if you'll keep that Greek chorus quiet for a few minutes, I'll show you something. We know from the direction of the bullet wound that whoever shot him was standing directly in front of him, right? You don't think you're spraying a bombshell, do you? We all know that. All right, all right. Then whoever it was that shot Davis must have been standing in that 12-inch space between Davis and the cabinet. Who do you suppose it was? One of the seven dwarfs? Redden, I'll never admit it to publication, but right here among friends, I'll admit you're right. How come I never thought of that? If you don't mind, I'll show you something else you never thought of. Sure. Okay, fine. You can get over there. Now, follow those footprints over to the cabinet. Now, stay right where you are. Who are you going to pinch? Why, whoever put the gun in that... Uh, uh... So there's a whole lot of things I'm not thinking about this afternoon. Mm. Who did put the gun in that cabinet? Well, I think we'll have that settled for you in time for the morning papers if you'll keep this quiet and give me 24 hours. Oh, I can't, Red. My job is... Look, Johnson, my job's at stake. Come on, I've been of some help to you. Give me 24 hours. You can make the pinch and take all the credit. Remember, boys, I don't worry about this. Okay, Red, go through it. Come on. Hey, Bush, do you know what I was thinking when I was lying there? I'm glad I've got some insurance to leave to the wife and the kids. Of course, not that it would do me any good. The chances are the wife would get married again. They generally do, you know. And the kids would spend the rest of the dough. <laughs> that chance I have of them thinking of me. All I do is slave all my life to leave them a couple of bucks and then live the life of Riley. And laugh for the poor sucker like me that's given them all this. That's the gratitude I get. Do you know what I'm going to do, Chief? I'm going to cancel that insurance policy. What are you doing here? Oh, Bill, I've got a clue. A clue? Listen, Sally, I've got no time to bother with your clothes. If I don't crack this case for tomorrow, we'll be out in the street. Bill, this is important. Really, it is. Do you pay the cab driver for me? No, you take cab, Sally. Tomorrow we may be asking credit from the subway company. I want you to read this letter to me. Sally, darling, will you please go home? Listen, honey. I sent out a package from Babyland store today. It cost me $83.75. I cleaned out the place. Oh, Bill, you shouldn't have got it, but just read this note. Oh, Sally, I haven't got time for your silly car. Correspondence. I'm very busy. Hey, Flanagan, you stay with her, see? Wherever she goes, you go. Don't let her out of your sight. Hey, wait a minute, boys. Bill. Hey, boys. All the stupid, stubborn fatheads I ever knew. Yeah, well, he's not the only one in the family. He wouldn't even read my message. Well, that's because he doesn't read it, will you? Well, I'm going to read it for you. Oh, yes, you do. You read it for me. Oh, we get hundreds of these phony letters every day. Every nut in the country writes them. It's just fan mail. But this isn't from a nut. I know it isn't. 
How would you like to see the expression on Bill's face if we went into the McClellan apartment and found an important clue? No, ma'am, we're not going anywhere as near there, and I'm not half as dumb as I look. Then how would you like to go for a walk in the hot, broiling sun? A nice, long walk. Mrs. Reardon. You must feel terrible, Mr. Flanagan. Why don't you take a cab and go home? I do feel terrible, Mrs. Reardon. But if you walk 900 miles, you're not going to lose me. All right, Flanagan, you win. Come on, let's take the subway back. I'm standing here minding my own business. I'm not making any trouble, and I don't want you to make any trouble. See? Did I detect a note of sarcasm in your tone of verse? That's the way I talk, lady. Can I help it? I just don't care to continue this discussion. In the edges. It's only Times Square. Nobody is getting fresh. Hey, what's the idea? You know, you know, sorry, oh, you don't want to get away with it, Paul. Hey, what'd he do? What he did, I can't mention a mixed company. Why, you weapons! I got a good plan. A girl, this guy trying to get fresh. Why? He succeeded. Oh, yeah? Now, wait a minute. For heaven's sake, don't let him get away from me. Wait a minute. How long do I have to wait for Crenshaw? He's on his way up, Mr. Johnson. Maybe we can get some information out of him this time. I hope so. Stone's been trying to get me on the phone all day to tell me I'm through. I've been dodging him so far, but he's bound to catch up with me. Sit down, Crenshaw. All right, officer, you can wait outside. Now listen, Crenshaw. Johnson here, the DA's right-hand man, has talked to the district attorney, and I've talked to the insurance company. It looks as though we might make a deal with you. A deal? You see, Crenshaw, the few pieces of jewelry you took is small stuff compared to these murders in the big hall. Yeah, it's lucky I was locked up. You'd blame me for those, too. No, no. Only maybe you can help us with these killings. Now, look, here's the deal. You talk, you help us find the killer, and both the DA's office and the insurance companies will recommend a suspended sentence. I couldn't tell you anything for the simple reason I don't know anything. I'm innocent. <laughs> You'll be in play for a sucker, Crenshaw. And I'll... Don't be dumb. Here's your chance to pull out. For you, Reardon. Yeah? Reardon, this is Stone. I've been trying to get you all day. I've got some bad news for you. They did, are you sure? Sure of what? I haven't told you yet. You're off this case, Reardon. I don't like to do this, but your results... Say, that's fine. That's fine. That's great results. Now listen, you get a man on every spot. What is this? What spot? Hey, I have the darndest phone conversations with you. Remember, if they get away, it means your job. Who gets away? You Reardons are all crazy, and you're driving me crazy. All right, get busy now. Get me McIntyre. Yes, sir? McIntyre. I told you we didn't need his help. We've got this case busted wide open. Mrs. Nacelle's had an attack of nerves and ducked. Uh -huh. 
Hello, McIntyre? Yes? Send out a full teletype description of Mrs. Nacelle to all airway stops between here and El Paso. Yes, sir. She beat it with another guy. So she beat it? El Paso, huh? Trying to make Mexico. Yeah, and the boys that are trailing Mrs. Nacelle have got a full description of the boyfriend. We'll shoot that along later. Then your hunch was right. It was the dame. Yeah. I told you you were being played for a sucker, Crenshaw, so she tossed you overboard. It's all right, Reardon, I'll talk. They're not trying to make Mexico. Buying airplane tickets was part of the plan to throw off suspicion. The real getaway's by boat from Montreal. You better check on that angle, too, Johnson. She may have switched plans as well as companion. Well, she's not going to get away with it. Uh, I was in those robberies with Mrs. Nacelle. I went to your office to throw you off the trail. Oh, you did? Yeah. Whose handwriting is this? That's hers, Mrs. Nacelle's. I get it. She set the trap to kill Davis because they were squabbling about the business. No, no, that isn't why Davis was killed. It was an accident, wasn't it, Crenshaw? Yes, he meant to kill Croy. What? He was disposing of the jewels for us, and they got out of hand. Demanded too much. She told him she'd leave a note and the key to the private filing cabinet with a hatchet girl at the Skyline Club. Davis got suspicious, and he got the note that was meant for Croy. And he followed the instructions in the note and got himself killed. Say, she must have killed Croy the same way. Certainly. See, you know, you're lucky she ran away with somebody else. She may have taken a dislike to you, too. Well, she got the same trap set for Mrs. Reardon. What? She sent an anonymous note. Told her to look in the wall safe. If she does, she'll be killed the same way Croy was. Oh. It's a good thing I've got Flanagan watching Sally. Well, Reardon, this ties up the whole thing into a neat little bundle. Now, if we can just locate Mrs. Nacelle, every... I thought you said you were already on her trail. Sit down, sit down. Just a nice little white lie. Why are you? Hello, boss. Hello, Flanagan. But where's Sally? I don't know. Did you see what was in that note she was trying to show me? You mean about going to the Nacelle apartment? Was that it? Yes, let her go. Holy smoke, come on. What's the matter? Listen, my feet are killing me, boy. Come on, can't you step out any faster? I got it on the floor now. She hurt you? I don't know. Say, take a look at your hat. My hat? What's the matter with my hat? I... See who that is. Hello. It's Johnson, boss. Look after Sally. Yeah? Yeah, she's all right. We made it in time. Huh? Mrs. Nacelle's what? Yeah, she's in my outer office. Wants to see me. How do you like that for nerve? I get it. She wants to establish an alibi. Sure, if she's in your office when Sally's murdered here, we can't pin anything on her. No, no, Johnson. Listen to what she has to say. Then let her go. 
two to one, she'll come back here to see if her little gadget worked again. Then I'll catch her red-handed, and we'll have all the evidence we need. Oh, I know, baby. Yes, I know your head hurts. But I'm not asking you to do much. All I'm asking you to do is to play dead. Oh, Bill, I don't want to play. My head's splitting. Please take me home, Bill. Well, listen, Sally, it won't take long. You've got to do it. This is our one chance to catch Mrs. Nacelle with the goods. Johnson's already let her go, and she'll be here any minute to gloat over your corpse. Oh, Bill, I'm scared. Now, listen, Sally, there's nothing to be afraid of. Listen, Flanagan and I'll be waiting behind the bathroom door. Listen, Sally, all I want you to do is to lie there. It's our job, Flanagan's and mine, to nab her when she comes in. Yes, but I don't like my job. Get down there. Hey, Flanagan, come on. Get in the bathroom. Now then, do you understand the whole thing? Yes, but what do I do? All you do is to lie there, dead. Then when Mrs. Nacelle comes in, we grab her. That's simple, isn't it? Very. Oh, Bill. Sorry I couldn't come in on cue. But it's not my intention to play the loser in this beautifully planned little melodrama. Look out, Bill. But look, Mrs. Nacelle, it's not going to do you any good to stay up here. There'll be detectives here any minute. The one who was following me won't. Oh. Well, don't be a fool. Now's your chance to get away. You can't shoot my bill. I won't let you. You both caused me entirely too much trouble. I always thought you were a smart woman. Hey, boss, did you ever... Well, I see we got here just in time. Yeah. There's your prize package all wrapped up and ready to take home. I brought the photographers with me. <laughs> you figure everything, Johnson. Okay, go to it. The headlines are all yours. Yeah, they always think they can get away with it. Yes, and there's one more in every minute. Yeah. 80, 81, 82, 83... Seventy-five. Eighty-three dollars and seventy-five cents. And it's a pleasure. Baby Lamb salutes you. Gee, I didn't know I ordered all this stuff, Sally. Bill. I guess we can use it all, though. I... Look, blue. I guess that's for a little boy, huh? Bill, do you love me? Do I love her? Hmm. Because you better love me an awful lot. I have something to say to you. <laughs> what, darling? Well, there isn't going to be a... Now, Bill, don't get mad. There isn't. Yeah. All these weeks, I've been overlooking everything because I thought you were. And now you're not. I might have known it. $83.75. Well, you might as well send this junk back. Hey, you're going the wrong way. Am I?